Hello and welcome to Ecoing Factor number 5, which is rateability. Open Plans is a good example for a map with high rateability. So let's say you spawn on the flank spot and we assume a team game situation, 3 versus 3, and the your opponent is going to be here. Then by tendency, the person who attacks mass extractors instead of building all the units and the person who builds many engineers instead of tanks is most likely going to lose because the spawns are incredibly close together so the ACU walk time from your core to the enemy core would be 90 seconds and of course tanks are much faster and light assault boss too so this would be a map where simply by how easy it is to raid the opponent you wouldn't eco a lot the situation changes a little when you start on this spot in a team game. There you are a little bit secluded and the travel time from this spot to this spot is higher. Plus there is a choke point in the center that's shielding you to some extent. And I think for this spot it's also very easy to get some wall here and here and avoid getting flanked by the enemy. So by tendency on this spot you would eco more than on the flank spot. Now we take a look at a navy map and check this one for rateability. This is Roanoke and this is actually a navy map with quite high rateability because naval gameplay is um, quite economically intensive and you would expect that like T2 navy is usually standard way of ending games but on Roanoke T1 navy is quite strong since the islands work the way they do. So you have eight mass points on each island and a T1 frigate can take out six out of these eight mass spots from the shore. So T2 navy on this map certainly helps, but you can sometimes even win games on this map with T1 navy alone. So having an extended T1 navy stage may make sense, especially for factions with good T1 navy such as Cybern. Right. So this would also be a map where you eco a little less than on some other maps. And now Seraphim Glaciers works differently from Roanoke. So the assumption is the same. I explained Roanoke for one versus one. Of course, if you play stuff like Phantom or something, you naturally have more ecoing going on. But if you play one v one on Roanoke, then raiding with frigates is common. And here on Seraphim Glaciers, you can see that a frigate can take out two of the mixes of the core and same on the other side of the island but that's actually it already so this one for example is in range but since this is so steep i don't think that the gun is going to be able to to hit this yeah so you can see it hits the cliff and these islands aren't usually prioritized but you would rather drop transports here and here and this is like your third priority pretty much so the travel time between the opponent's base and your base is also quite high and that's why having a larger naval force rather on T2 uh, is better than having like T1 navy or a small amount of T2 navy and when large groups of T2 navy are required then you would naturally eco much more on a map where you cannot raid as easily. And uh, we can spawn a destroyer. And now you can see that this is going to have way more raid impact. So maybe it will spare this mass spot, but all the others on the island are going to be killed by this destroyer. So. T2 Navy is, is key here, right? And this should also give you an idea of how much you eco on the map. Now, Gap of Rohan would be a map with very low rateability. So you can still do drops and stuff like that. But if both teams have a cloud of interceptors on both hills and some scouting, and there's like one gun ACU or like a small firebase in the center, then it's going to be super hard to raid on this map. And that's why people eco so much. So every map has 
a natural array of echoing, which depends on how easy it is to raid. And I hope the maps I presented here are going to give you some idea of the differences. And you should probably always echo to some extent, but there are some maps where echoing earlier is going to kill you. So make sure you understand the difference.